Hi, Joel. Uh, it was difficult to, to be here, but I am here. Uh, so let's talk a little bit of, of this, um, this topic. Um, let's say that this is like a kind of conclusion about my investigations while, while writing a book. So I experimented a lot of technologies in a specific for the age. So I'm Sergio Mendes. I had that presentation. I, I used to do some kind of research at the university. I also work in a company uh, called Jalo, uh, working as a DevOps uh, engineer there. Uh, so let's get inside of this topic. Well, why serverless? Well, I know that this is a conference about uh, Knative, but has a specific use case for the edge. So Knative has different components because maybe some of us uh, have tried this kind of features or maybe not. But Knative has uh, two features, the Knative eventing and the Knative serving. The serving is essentially like Lambda functions from AWS um, functions as a service, but this time it's at the edge. Um, basically, we are going to create functions running at the edge. I am using a Raspberry Pi just, just for this demo. Um, I am going to scale down, down zero to create the function that I am using to insert data to some database. Um, in general, the Knative, when you are using serverless at the edge, let's say that you are going to reduce the amount of power that you are using in your devices. So let's say that it's less power consumption in general, less power, less CPU, less RAM, and that's the deal because at the edge, maybe the devices doesn't have like an odd power, that maybe they are using batteries and that things, or maybe a solar panel or, or that kind of elements to power the device. Um, the challenges at the edge will be like the power consumption, you have limited resources, RAM, um, storage, uh, CPU. There are a lack of standards uh, when you are creating a distributed system because edge computing, you are distributing the data in different uh, places uh, acro across the local environment or maybe the cloud. And because the ARM uh, processors are, let's say that ARM doesn't use uh, like a lot of energy, it's like a good processor to be used at the edge. That's because the uh, ARM are becoming pretty popular at the edge or for that the specific use cases using hardware. So explaining a little bit the evolution of um, the server, let's say, we usually use like virtual machines using bare metal, we are installing VMware and things like that. Then the things started to move using containers, like Docker is like a big explosion and the people started using containers and that things. Kubernetes to create like distribute systems using containers and to manage the containers, orchestrate containers. And in the next evolution for this kind of technologies is not have control in, in the servers, let's say just deploy uh, small functionalities, uh, just a function. But in this time we are creating like a kind of container as a service more or less. But in general it's serverless. Uh, talking about solutions, we are using monolithic applications, orchestrating containers like Kubernetes because Knative runs on Kubernetes, but Let's say that Kubernetes could be like the framework to create distributed systems. That's the, um, the point of view of this presentation. And finally, the next abstraction for this distributed uh, platform, Kubernetes, is to create functions as a service, but you have some control in the bare metal. And you are simplifying the life for the developers. Across the time, um, and the services in the cloud, um, there are like the infrastructure as a service, the container as a service, like Cloud Run or something similar. As you know, well, there are some services of, of Google uh, use Knative to deploy functions on demand and that type of services. And another kind of evolution is like, let's say that it's an abstraction near to the, to the hardware to start losing control to the hardware and become simple like a functions as a service. 
So that's in general the evolution. You are near to the hardware, you are starting to lose that kind of control to the hardware, but you are doing more abstraction uh, to the, your solution in order to simplify the life to the developer. That's the way to create functions on demand. Now, maybe this is a kind of new topic for some of us. Uh, age computing is like a pretty simple, like basic concept. So you are doing the processing near to the source of the data. So it's near to the edge, it's running the things at the edge. So there we will like hardware in ball bell where you are processing the information. In this case, in this presentation that I'm going to show, the data, well, I have a remote control here that I am going to press, simulating that I am in the layer at the edge. I am processing information at, at the edge and, sorry, and then I am going to show uh, some graphs about the data that I am collecting. So that's in general. Edge computing has different layers. You can connect your information that is running on near to the edge or near to the source of data that is running in this case in the Raspberry Pi and connect that information with the cloud. But maybe could be not the case in some, in some, in some specific use cases. In this case, I am using all the things at the edge, but you can connect the information. Let's say the idea is to process all the information, transform all the information, and the final resort, maybe you can publish that information in a database in the cloud for to share uh, reports across different countries or whatever you want, or maybe connect different uh, pieces of hardware across the world and connect that things using the cloud. So in general, you can see like four layers in edge computing. The tiny edge is where the sensors live and the sensors that capture the data. In this case, well, I am using a, an infrared remote control. This, this represents my sensor that is living in the, the tiny edge. So when we are talking about tiny edge, we are talking about sensors. The far edge, um, is the place where the data is processed. So the sensors send the information to the far edge. In this case, I am going to represent this with my Kubernetes cluster in my Raspberry Pi. So this uh, remote control is going to send information to my cluster. Then the near edge is like just a layer to send the data to the cloud. In this case, will be um, locally this information and if I, let's say that I want to share uh, my reports uh, in other places out around the world, maybe I can deploy like a Grafana um, deployment uh, using Google Cloud or whatever cloud provider that you want. In this case, I am going to do the things locally. This layer mentioned that is the cloud layer but remember that the cloud could be public cloud or the private cloud. So in this case, let's say that it's private, it's locally. So it depends in your use case. Putting some examples about the different pieces that you can find at the edge could be like your sensors or your edge devices, that that's the name that receives. And well, let's say that uh, Kubernetes at the edge with K3S, I am going to talk about that you can do the things as simple as you want. So what is K3S? Maybe some of us, um, so maybe we don't know what is K3S. K3S is a Kubernetes distribution that have removed all the things that you don't need in order to reduce the, the power processing, the memory consumption and that things. And K3S package all the basic functionality, all that you need in one binary. It's more or less using like 500 megabytes. It's really, really small uh, binary. K3S is like uh, another regular Kubernetes uh, distribution. Um, you can configure your cluster or your Kubernetes using one node or the multi-cluster node with a master and their workers and that kind of a structure. In this case, I am using a a single node configuration. K-native, but this size is like our tool or the piece of software that is going to create this abstraction 
to create the functions using my hardware in the, in the K3S cluster. And it can give us uh, some event-driven kind of architecture and the power to do and other things. I'm going to talk about that. Um, so Knative ser Serving, that is a feature in a specific for Knative, is going to give us ta that abstraction to run the functions using my hardware. The Knative eventing, because we know when, when we are creating a distributed system, let's say, well, a distributed system could be how a social network is created, like Netflix or that kind of things. In a social network, they are not the standards. You uh, programming in whatever language you want or whatever language is useful for you. So when you are using Cloud Native eventing, uh, Knative proposed to use Cloud Events. So Cloud Events can give you the, the structure to create your functions and it's giving you like a kind of a standard to create how to call your functionalities. So Cloud, uh, cloud Events is going to give you like the structure and the order in your system. I think that is not like as easy to understand sometimes, but at the end, you are giving order to your system. So it could be easier in the future, like a kind of a standard that a distributed system is lacking. So that's the reason to use Cloud Events. Istio, because I know that a lot of people love Istio, but if you are running the things at the edge, it's too much. It uses a lot of CPU, uh, RAM, and that things, and I think that it's not reliable to install that thing in, the, in a Raspberry Pi, for example, because it has reduced resources. In this case, uh, Knetty support different, um, let's say, service meshes or proxies to create the functionality. In this case, I am using Contorn because Contorn um, has uh, support for ARM devices at, at this moment. I don't know if it has more support for another piece, but I am using Contorn in order to run my thing using ARM. So that means that when you are using a really lightweight distribution of Kubernetes K3S plus Knative, you have an easy way to create a edge computing system that process information near to the edge. So that's the reason to combine my Kubernetes and the Knative without using a lot of resources. So in my demonstration, um, ah, let me see. Let's move to the presentation. I think that I have, well, okay, here is it. Let's walk through to, here is the desk. <laughs> here is the Raspberry Pis. Okay, um, in this side is like the master, well, it's a single node cluster. This one that is in the, in, in the last one. This Raspberry Pi is simulating the H device that is capturing information and sending the information to the master node here that is in running on the far edge. So let's say that this one is the far edge and this one is like the tiny edge with my remote controller. I'm not using the cloud layer, let's say, just the thing private. Then I am, I co I am connecting um, my, my device that is running at the edge, capturing information. And let's say what is going to happen here. Okay, let me see. Here are some LEDs. Oh, I think that looks better in the, in the mirror here. So, I have three LEDs. The yellow LED is going to, let me see if I can move it here. I think that it looks like the three colors, okay? So the yellow is like my main program is running at the edge. I am not running the thing using containers, just pure uh, Python script. So the yellow LED is showing that it's running. The green LED means that I am pressing the green LED. The, the green button here at my remote controller, here is it. And if I press the red button, it's going to la uh, turn on the red LED. So let's restart the thing, okay? When I press that, there's a function that is created by demand, as you saw in that moment. 
after two minutes or one and a half minute, it's going to be out of scale to down to zero. Um, so right now, this thing is going to to capture the information and to show a Grafana dashboard here. I am running, um, well, here is the proof. Let's say I am running a master. This is using, let me see, get notes, just to show information about the cluster. Yeah, as you can see, it's using a Raspberry Pi kernel. <laughs> just to, it's r r right now it's running at the edge. That's the proof. Um, here I am running the, um, the script. Let's power off this thing. Let's create it again. It's running. Right now, let me see. Well, it's running the, the red level. Where is the control? Oh, here is it. Okay, so let me press my control. Oh, right now it's terminating the thing because I am not using the functionality. So it's scaling down zero. In that moment, you are saving um, processing resources. So, well, it's in, an, in, it's in an idle moment. And right now, let's say, well, an event happens and I want to process the information. Okay, let's press the re button here and it's created by demand, yeah? And then it show it in this graph and a dashboard. So let's play a little bit. Let me show this screen maybe here. Okay, let's put here the thing. Let me, I think that that's okay. Okay, let's put it in this place. Okay, so let's press. Ah, you can see here my, my finger. The green is going to change to the green. Let's wait for some seconds. Ah, wait, I have to point to my to my device there. Okay, green. Okay, let's go to red. Let's power off the thing. That Let's say that one is on, zero is off. Let's push the green again. Let's push the red again. Several times the red is going to reflect in the dashboard, a lot of times you can see that there are like a lot of times the red, a lot of times of green. Let's see, a lot of times of green and let's off the thing. And right now, if we can wait, it's going to scale down this function. Let's wait for, for a bit there. Let's continue with the code. What happened in the code? Well, the code is like pretty basic example. I think that some people likes to play with Kubernetes and create that things just for hobby. But where you aren't doing the things, but hobby, you can discover things to resolve problems. That's the cool stuff. Um, you can inspect, well, let's say right now the Raspberry Pis are expensive, but you can use another device similar than a Raspberry Pi. There are another devices. So here is like pretty basic code. Let me see. No, it's still running, but it's going to scale down zero. So just connecting to a MySQL database, inserting data, and that's it. If we explore the dashboard, it's just a, just a SQL query here. Just a select in a table. Everybody knows to use MySQL maybe one time, so it's pretty basic to create a query using MySQL. And that's it. With that, you have all the power to do that. Right now, it's terminating the function because I am not using the function. And it's going to scale down zero. So zero post there. Um, let me see. It's still deleting the thing. Um, really pretty basic example of that. 
Here is a container that runs my metric because this thing, the metric part is running there. Let's explore a little bit the, um, the dashboard. I think that I have here the whole architecture. Let's explore that. Um, okay. So doing a kind of diagram to explain the thing, that's the H device that is receiving information from the infrared remote controller is going to turn off or turn off the LEDs. It's running that thing, that kind of logic using Python. And the single node cluster is going to receive um, that information um, doing a request to some API that is running. Um, that API is this one, created using Flask and a pretty basic Python example, and is running as a, as a service in Kubernetes. Um, let me see. Where is, okay, here is it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then this function inserts information to MySQL that is running at the H2. So my Raspberry Pi is running MySQL, K native and the functions, all the things. And I am running the things uh, locally. I am not using I am not using the internet. I I didn't deploy anything in the cloud, so all the things are running locally. Because I have like if you can see, there are like a, let me see, a switch here to connect all the Raspberry Pis, so pure Ethernet connections. Let's continue. Um, okay, that's basically my architecture. This API was created on demand using Canary Server, and all the information on MySQL is uh, showed with Grafana. What it looks is how it looks right now, more prettier. Um, this is like a connection. Maybe you can remember when we are studying engineering in the university. Pretty simple example. Turning on LEDs, turning off LEDs. Uh, so these ones are the slides. I think that I, I want to share that was a pretty, um, um, was difficult to do this kind of presentation. Why? Because of the internet connection, I don't know what connection is here and whatever. And that's the same challenge of doing edge computing systems. How I can manage my IP addresses, that's the reason. So I buy the, a switch that maybe cost me like $10, more or less. And I use the wireless connection and the Ethernet connection. But I only use the Ethernet connection. It was a static because Kubernetes is using NITs and a static configuration and a reliable network configuration. And the only thing that changes is my wireless connection. So could be any any IP address or whatever you want. I tested this a lot of things because I failed in some presentation, this kind of thing, but I didn't count on consideration this kind of changes. But as you can see, Kubernetes in the presentation of K3S can manage this kind of challenges. So that's a little bit tricky to perform this kind of presentation, but runs. And that's, that's the way that each computing works. You have to connect the device and have to run. So that's the challenge. Um, here is the, the repo that I am using for, for this demo. It's just the source code right now. I have the instruction, but I have to finish that part, but we'll be ready tomorrow. Um, my personal information, if you want to contact me or you want to, you want to share your experiments <laughs> with me. I think just for fun. Um, I think that if you have questions, you are curious about that, uh, I think that what you have the world. <laughs> Do we have any questions?
Did you did you do any measurements to see how much power was saved between the, ah, the running five. state and the idle state? Uh, I think that I can. Well, let me see. I think that I have something here. Let me find it. Uh, let me see. Wait. Oh no, oh no. <laughs> it's not this part. Um, Kian. Okay, this command. Knative has two presentation as Kubernetes. You can do the things uh, imperative or declarative. With the with the Kian uh, command line, well, in this example, I am using um, the imperative way to do the things, but this command can uh, output the YAML to create the function. And it's pretty similar of the structure of, of the Kuber, regular Kubernetes deployment, but it adds another options like the amount of time to scale down zero and that kind of thing. So I think that I can add that kind of YAML file in the repository too. Electricity. In, in terms of uh, electricity, like how many watts or, or amps did you save? I think that, for example, well, in a specific for a Raspberry Pi, you can get that information using some libraries to get like the amount of resources and measure the CPU and, and that kind of thing. So you can take in consideration how many watts per hour, what is your connection, and using the time, you can do like multiplications to calculate that information. Are you using numbers No, about the consumption. But I think that last, the way is like, for example, when you are using things like Datadog or things like that, well, you only have the time, the amount of watts per hour, and you can measure the CPU and the memory and do some play with that number. So. so it sounds like the main purpose of this is just to make things easier for development. Because I imagine it's always going to be more expensive in terms of resources to run Kubernetes other than just, um, like, as opposed to just put, writing a native app for the Raspberry Pi. If Knative could be the things easier to you, I think, at the edge, let's say. Well, I think, like, talking about the standards, let's say, well, you have to think how I can call this function, what I can I do. And if you adopt cloud events, that is a way to create the things in, in Knave. I think that maybe the learning curve will be higher, but at the end you have order in that. And it will simplify the way to call the things. So at the end, it's going to help you in that way. I think that could simplify. I think that Knave, because it's uh, functions as a service, is more developer focused instead of doing and managing the infrastructure because it's serverless. So I think that in general, it's going to help you. I didn't do like, well, let's say in the real world, we have a team, maybe there is a DevOps engineer there and you are the developer. So you are not going to touch maybe the infrastructure. Maybe you are only to use the KN command line and the YAML files and that's it. So at the end, we'll simplify your life. Sometimes there are some use cases because maybe a data scientist of a scientist Maybe we want to implement an edge computing system, but then the end, uh, well, maybe he want to, uh, they want to ask to some DevOps engineer or something like that uh, to do the things by by himself or or something. But I think that it's pretty basic um, kind of a structure compared with another kind of tools. Let's say OpenFast is like well, it's different. It's different. Um, but I think that Knative gives you the event-driven thing that is pretty commonly used for edge computing. So let's say if you use uh, a tool like OpenFast, you are missing the part of event-driven structure. So I think that Knative gives you the enough tools to create and to simplify or to spend less time thinking about how to build the system. Yeah, I have another question. Um, have you considered to use Knative Eventing too on the edge, like in broker or because your event? Ah, well, so 
yeah. K native use a broker behind yeah. in the um, in the K native eventing is that another feature that has to create event driven architecture. You can use Kafka. Well, Kafka I think that is too heavy for the edge. Um, K native has um, some broker that is integrated inside. I don't remember the name right now, but this in memory. Yeah, the K memory. So it's like pretty, pretty lightweight that you can use it at the edge. But let's say that this is just an experiment at the edge, but you have, if you want to create something bigger, so maybe you can use another brokers like Kafka or who knows, or maybe you can create your brokers in the cloud just to manage the, that the service is reliable and, and complement the things with the hardware. So you can do a lot of things. It depends, it depends on your use case. But of course, you can use brokers. Another question. Any more questions? All right. Um, thank you, Professor. That was brilliant. <laughs> and I wanted to remind everyone, but please keep on voting on the SCED app. And someone asked me earlier about where they can access the slides. Uh, the speakers would be updating the slides in the SCAD app itself, so there should be a PDF available to download maybe today or tomorrow. Right. So let's move from Edge to Nodeless. Our next session is Nodeless.